Hello, everyone. Welcome to Flux Bug Scrub 19. Uh, we have our spreadsheet ready to go. Um, so we're going to start probably, I think, uh, let's see, how old are these things actually? I think this looks like a good range. There aren't a lot of discussions in there. Maybe things between two and four. Um, so the stale age column is composite of these two. So that will make sure we have things that aren't too old, but also not too new, uh, kind of roughly. And we'll start with only discussions, and then we'll probably move on to issues uh, as we run out of discussions in the range that we want to look at. Or um, we'll see how far we get. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Why don't we start with this? This is from someone at Weaveworks, Steve Waterworth. So this discussion is basically around the idea that you have two sources of reconciling drift, and that is either when a change comes through the source or a change comes from some activity in the cluster that didn't have an accompanying source change. And the feature request is around, can we alert on those second type of change? Um, and I don't know that we're going to make any progress on this because it's a really big question, but I just want to draw everyone's attention to it. Uh, maybe we, maybe we just move on unless anyone has anything to say about this issue. Have you ever? No. I think everyone's muted. Okay, so um, we, we moved down the, uh, I haven't, probably should explain the format because we have a few new people. Um, we moved down the list uh, pretty much as quickly as we can. Um, if if uh, there's anything interesting to talk about on one of these discussions, we'll stop uh, and talk about it. But the goal is breadth, not depth. So Flux gives panic runtime error out of range when bootstrapping Bitbucket server. Ah, it looks like you should enter an existing project. This looks like uh, it's already being addressed. And that's the other thing is we can filter out answered discussions and that'll save us uh, at least discussions that are marked answered from revisiting them. Okay. Um, by the way, if anyone has come with an issue that they really wanna uh, look at, we can also talk about a specific issue if you brought one. Um, okay, this one says, Set up Flux V2 via Terraform with a plain Git repository. Right, plain Git repository. I don't, do they only work with GitHub? I haven't looked at it closely enough. I thought I've used it with GitLab, but I'm, I might be wrong. I think he's saying that uh, something with no API. And I think the problem is that Terraform wants to create the Git repository, but mm. that should be something you can work around. Look at the Flux provider. Mm. I noticed an issue or may not be an issue. When I don't provide, if there is a public repository and I create a Git repository with source controller, 
don't provide any credentials. And if it's in GitHub, it works properly. But if it's in GitLab, it asks for authentication. Have you observed that? If you don't provide any credentials? Mm -hmm. Even if it's a public repository, it lasts for, source controller will fail asking for authentication. Bootstrap will um, fail. You can create those yourself with no secret ref and an HTTPS link and they work. I, I, I think I opened that issue a couple of days ago and I think it does affect GitHub too. No, um, not, not Bootstrap. You're adding a source, say a mm -hmm. source Git repository. Mm -hmm. You cannot, you can add a GitHub public repository without any credentials, but you, when you add a GitLab public repository, it just fails. Oh. Yeah, I'm seeing that it's very, it, it only mentions GitHub. <laughs> You're right. It's very tailored. Hmm. Interesting. So those are some related issues, I guess. I'm not sure how to respond to this person. I have a feeling there is some requirement in the Git provider, maybe. I don't know, I have to check the code base. I'm gonna have to check with a friend too, because we used GitLab back at State Farm and I, I could have sworn someone was trying to do this. So maybe they didn't actually get it to work, but I'll check with them too, see if they. Cool, great. Uh, I think this one is already answered. I remember this question. Support Helm chart inflation generator. Oh, I answered it. Um, oh, what's an inflation, inflation generator? And it, so this, as far as I can tell, it's uh, like what Argo CD does with uh, Helm chart. So customize. Uh, in fact, maybe this is what's under the hood of the Argo CD Helm chart. I'm not even sure. Um, where it will take the Helm chart and inflate it, like template it out and render it. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, so... This, you know, you lose all the nice benefits of Helm controller being able to actually use the Helm hooks the way they're intended. Um, and you can't also do this because you have to shell out to binary. Uh, and I don't think that anyone knows if there's a way to do this without shelling out to a binary. Uh, I think that's actually how it works under the hood. So we probably can't support this. Um, resource monitoring data dog. Somebody submitted uh, a nice looking response here. Patch flux components so they can be discovered by Datadog agents. Well, they just need labels, I guess. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Should this be put into some docs? Hmm? That's a good point. We could add this like to our docs and be like, if you're using, yeah. But then there will be many providers. To yeah, you're for right. It's like, all of use them. this with Splunk. Use this with, yeah. But <laughs> well, they should have docs for Flux instead of we should have. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, Datadog should have something. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, how do I make sure that that doesn't fall off? Well, it won't because it's a discussion. It'll just get marked as answered. That's okay. Uh, flux suspend and Helm uninstall. Okay. Is it normal? Yes. 
this is exactly how it's supposed to work. Uh, should the suspend be removed on Helm uninstall? Okay. I don't know why why that would be an expectation, but no, I don't think that is. Uh, how do we explain this? Wait, so they're uninstalling a Helm release by doing Helm uninstall, even though Flux was managing it? Yeah, I think their expectation is that they can Helm uninstall and then Flux reinstalls it. And that is the mm. reasonable expectation. But if you mm. suspended it, the Helm, Helm doesn't know anything about Helm release. That's what I should tell this person. Right. So they've suspended the customization, but then they... What? Um, not following. You know, when you when you suspend the custom the, or yeah. the suspended the Helm release, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, then, then it, it doesn't would've... reconcile at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that seems like a given. So I'll come back to this and uh, write something down. Oh, I have seen that issue. So it's like basically because you've uninstalled Helm, but even though because it's a Helm resource that's created and that's all that really is created, customization is like whatever. I already created this Helm resource. I think I have seen this. And then it don't I won't stand up the Helm chart again because it did its part. No, if you if you have a Helm release uh, flux artifact and then you uninstall the Helm release itself. Oh, oh, yeah. So Helm, Helm is tracking um, what happens to the release through a secret. And it's uh, one of these. So these, these are all backed by secrets. Yeah. Um, and if you like switch to this namespace, uh, this is the namespace actually, sorry. And then you get secret and you do helm ls, mm -hmm. you can see that this revision one corresponds to this. Mm -hmm. And so there's a secret there. Mm -hmm. And when you do helm uninstall, helm reads this secret and it cleans up all the resources that are described in there. Mm -hmm. But helm doesn't know about this. Yeah. I'm sorry, not this one. Uh, I, I see the yeah. helm release one, right? The, yeah, yeah. I knew what you meant by that. Yeah. 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 Helm doesn't know anything about that. Yeah, so, so that one's going to see. This yeah. reconciles, it should reinstall the Helm release, but not if you have it suspended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. Cool. Okay, how to debug Flux CD customization patch errors? Ah, it's difficult, uh, but now probably less difficult, right? Uh, because we have Flux diff. Um, I think flux diff actually runs the customizations too. I think that's part of the idea. I mean, it runs the patches. So, so we have, uh, I know I have one of these. Let's see. Nope, maybe I don't. That's really surprising, actually. Um, well, hmm, that'll make it difficult for me to do this quickly. Um, is that anyone, uh, has anyone heard of Flux Diff already? Um, this is brand new. I haven't tried it. Yeah. Me either. Uh, by the way, uh, regarding debugging things, uh, we're writing new docs for all the different objects. And those docs, new docs will have sections about how do you debug and what information you can get from the objects. It's part of the refactor rewrite and the information you get out of the new controllers. Cool. So this is the feature that I'm talking about. Um, and, and this is what makes it less painful to use the flux 
patches feature, I think, if it does what I think it does, uh, which I think it does. Um, so it's actually looking at what flux will apply in your local path and comparing it to the state of the cluster. So if I make a change that I haven't committed or pushed yet, I can see how flux will apply that change, uh, which is really helpful if you have like nested customizations and you want to delete something and make sure that you didn't just, you know, cause a 5,000 line diff when really you only meant to move one thing from one place to another. And it should have been the same thing at the end. Um, so this will help you as long as it's all inside of a single flux customization. Yeah, and it's just a dry run. So there's no effect on the cluster to actually do that. But it's uh, aware of things like secrets. So it'll tell you that the secret changed, but it won't show you the secret. Um, it's a very nice feature. Uh, it's like so Terraform I'm, plan, right? It's like Terraform plan, yeah. Um, and you were saying we're going to have new debugging docs soon. Should I mention that? At least here? for the source controller, not for customize soon. But OK, I won't mention that. Yeah, no need to mention it. OK. Cool, OK. Using values from to replace objects in a list. Looks like someone already visited this in a previous bug scrub. I think I remember that. Let's just skip it. How to wait on flux reconciliation. Hmm, it's a flux v1 related question. There's mention of V2 in the last paragraph. They're asking if it like up, you know. So they're trying to have in their pipeline a way to like make sure that it did the apply. Yeah, I think I know. Okay. I think I know um, about this question. I don't have a good answer for it, but no. um, this is uh, comes up a lot. And we tell people you can have the notification controller send notifications and you can consume them however you want. So a weird janky suggestion, but I it don't is know why super. you would do this. Yeah. I was thinking you could add to the pipeline, the like you could have a like the flux call the flux CLI and then actually do a reconciliation, like run the reconcile command, but I don't know why you would do that. Well, I mean, I guess you, I do know you why you would do that, but an like external pipeline and you want things to, you know, proceed synchronously from one that's operation true. to the next. If your interval, I was just, yeah, you're right. Cause if your interval is like 10 minutes then, or, or like longer even, cause you don't want too many API calls, maybe. Yeah. They could maybe do like a, a, a like a bash script or something like that. Right. Where they um, run a reconcile or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could have them run reconcile, and I think yeah. that would be a good thing to use. Um, probably not the notification controller. Uh, I, I was trying to think. That was about, my first thought too. Like, yeah. Is there enough information in the notifications that you could say, "Oh, here it is. This is the ready from you know particular commit," or or no, not really. You have to look and see. Then it's not part oh, wait, of their no, pipeline no. either, I guess. So. Well, here's good news actually for this person. If you are consuming notifications, they do tell you what revision um, mm. was synced. So if you have wait set in the spec, then you're pretty good to go yeah. uh, as long as you can consume the channel. Yeah, that's a good point. You could just, yeah. and notifications or uh, flux reconcile from the command line spec.wait. That way you can yeah. 
I think both of those are good suggestions. Yeah. yeah. In case one of them is not good for this person. Right. Agreed. Uh, shops is unmaintained. I'm just curious to see if there's been any more movement on that discussion that was linked here. So for anyone who's not aware of this discussion, there is an ongoing discussion about who maintains SOPS because it hasn't had a release since about uh, April, I think. Yep, April. And it hasn't had any TRs merged either. Uh, and uh, the two maintainers uh, both um, indicated that they're not in position to go on maintaining it. So there's obviously nothing we can do about that here, but uh, for anyone who hasn't heard of that situation, at least the good news is um, someone from Mozilla did finally respond. Uh, and uh, there was much rejoicing, I guess. So hopefully, hopefully that resolves itself and we don't have to do anything drastic. Um, okay, let's see, standardized event metadata and notification template. So I guess the state is we already have some templating mm -hmm. for image automation only. That's and a lot. alerting, I guess, too. Yeah, so there's a lot of places where you might want to change your template. You might want to print the commit message or which files have changed in the customization or anything. Yeah, this, this request does make sense for sure. Hmm. Commit status API. Oh, that's a good idea. Simplify the job of alerts a little bit. Huh. Well, this discussion was a while ago uh, and I haven't heard any more about it. Oh, by the way, for anyone who um, wants to put your name down on this list here, we're missing these folks. Um, you uh, maybe one day we'll give out t-shirts or something. Um, it's uh, based on point system. Uh, we're, we're trying to think of ways to make it more exciting and interesting for people to come to Bug Scrub. So um, uh, welcome to put your name on the attendance sheet. Okay. Multiple values, files from different Git repositories. This one looks familiar. Yeah, I did write back. Um, So I think that the answer I suggested was submodules. Oh, or almost not not submodules, but including. 
Um, is everyone aware of this feature? You can take a Git repository and include it in another one. That's kind of cool. You can take a Git, wait. So or take, take a sub directory of a Git repository and wow. include it in another one so that you can consume them as if they were a single Git repository. There's a couple of different ways to do this. Hmm. And one, one of them is to use Git submodules, okay. which are really painful to use in my experience um, and not very flexible uh, because they are basically Git repositories actually embedded in other Git repositories. And at mm -hmm. the top level, you need to make a commit that says these commits are in the sub repositories. And it's just really kind of awkward. And the way of, that you clone it, you need to tell people to clone it with a special option so that it expands all the sub modules uh, or make sure they remember to call sub module in it somehow. Um, and that never goes well in my experience. So. Uh, this is much nicer. You can take uh, a path from a Git repository and just put it somewhere in your target artifact. Yeah, I've not seen this. That's cool. Yeah. Hmm. I don't think this was a few weeks ago this year. Did you answer? With just one answer, right? It's last one. Okay, it was this year. Yeah, you've seen this before because you've been mm -hmm. to every bug scrub. <laughs> okay, so that one uh, is going to fall off the list now. Um, update image if tag updated in Helm chart. And it does say we looked at that one before too. Um, I think I know what that one's about. Uh, well, we can look at it anyway, since it's next. I think we saw this at the same thing. Yeah, looks that way. Um, for anyone who doesn't know about this problem, if you have a Helm chart, uh, that lives inside of a Git repository and you point your Helm release at the Git repository source, um, it behaves differently um, because you can have commits that didn't bump the version. Uh, whereas in your Helm repository source, you can't have a new Helm chart without a new version. You can overwrite the old one, but uh, you can't... Um, the artifacts are supposed to be immutable. Uh, so there's this reconcile strategy that you can set so that instead of using the version in chart.yaml as the version, it uses the git revision SHA instead. And that way you get the version bump every time there's a change and you don't have to uh, remember to bump the version when you want to upgrade or do any weird contortions like that. So uh, this is probably Gonna work better now. I'm I'm assuming a lot because I haven't really tried um, to break the Helm controller uh, too hard, uh, but I know there were those memory issues that were just fixed. So uh, fixed in zero twenty six. Okay, GitHub deployment notifications. That sounds like a good one. Would be nice to be able to set, yeah. Had to be, hmm. Oh, okay. So it's specifically around GitHub deployment environments. Many months ago, I think we discussed something related to this. Yeah. Deployment API. Deployment API. I think okay. someone created a proposal uh, that, that we should have it. Was it in here maybe? 
That's going to be hard to search for. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, there it is. Oh, that's just where this came from. Okay. Oh no, this is it's different. It's a different one. I'll come back here and uh, see how related they are and what else I can say. Cool. Disable log messages about reconciliation. Hmm. Is there a uh, less verbosity is, level? Is this the major condition? So it's going to be... Um, doesn't really say. This is the last oh, yeah, line. So it's yeah. Uh, no. Hmm. So we have been discussing about this. Uh, is this useful? Uh, the new re rewritten source controller does not log similar messages, but the existing controllers customize, including customize and customization and Helm chart or Helm control, all of them have this message. We feel, or looking at how users use it, it feels like it's useful for the users to know that something is happening. Yeah, you're but right. If, you look, if I want to know when it last reconciled. Yeah. But but if you look at upstream Kubernetes controllers, they don't tell you such things. Mm. So mm. we're still not sure what to do. We are planning to add something similar, but remove the next run information, just say finished. But if you get more feedback, maybe we can decide not to add it or maybe add it at a debug level. Yeah, like he's saying, it's like, is there a way to disable it? So maybe it's an optional thing. Hmm. Okay. Have you heard from any of these? Like, do they find it very useful and will they not like it if this information is not there? I think it should be a log level. I think you should be able to set uh, warn only or uh, something like that so that only exceptional messages are actually logged. Okay. Uh, because I think those are useful messages. I do. But uh, thinking in general, like when people use other Kubernetes components, not Flux, upstream, usually they don't think in terms of reconciliation, right? But when you use Flux, you are, or you get familiar with reconciliation, it'll sync. You do have a, a little bit more visibility into the reconciliation and control. Uh, like, I don't know any other Kubernetes controllers that have an interval setting where you can say, I want this one to sync on this interval and this one on a different interval. So maybe there is a case that there is a difference between the two and uh, we should stick with what we're doing. I'm not sure. 
I think others don't, others just react on events and we have a sinking timer running all the time. Yeah, and we have external things that we only get events about if we have gone to great lengths to connect them. So hmm. okay. okay, I think it's useful. It should be there. Yeah, I think I think so too. Um, do I run no matches for kind? Uh, yeah, this looks like the common question. It says I tried to apply uh, Helm chart. Yeah, okay. So the Helm chart has a CRD in it. And you can't apply a uh, custom resource and the Helm release. Is it really the upgrade issue? There's already a previous CRD installed and they're trying to do a trial with new CRDs? No, it's the dependency ordering between cross resource types issue. You can't say, I want this CRD to be applied after the Helm release or, or this custom resource to be applied after the Helm release is finished. Unless you have two flux customizations, then you can say this customization depends on that customization and that customization waits for this Helm release and then it works. Um, and that's a little bit confusing for people to figure out the first time. Um, but I'm just gonna mark the answer here. See this one. Show an example of notification providers of Microsoft Teams. Huh? Oh, so we have a Teams provider, but we don't have an example for it. Hmm. hmm. Should be easy enough to create one. Okay, update only relevant flux customization resources based on source changes. Oh. That is a good ask. I normally tell people don't use one Git repository for everything. Um, and if you do, don't use one branch for everything. Uh, if you have, you know, large for large values of everything, because if you want to set up notifications, then everything syncs at once. And then if you have complex dependencies between lots of things, you're waiting for five minutes for 12 interlinked dependencies to just sort out that they don't have any changes. Um, so it would be good to be able to just notify the sources that actually have changes, uh, but that will be very complicated because of the load restrictor default. Um, and you can't just say, flatly because the customization points at this path, then we only care about things in this path. It won't work uh, because it can reach outside the path. And here's, that's what he says. Yep. I have thoughts on monorepos. <laughs> we, they came up a lot at State Farm too. Now that's a cool idea. 
Use an OCI repository for each app. So when there's changes, you publish a new image for the app manifests. And then only that app gets the notification since it's deployed from an OCI. We don't actually have that yet, but that will be a cool option when we do. Cool. And I guess that's what they're doing with zip files instead. Um, I don't know what we can do to follow this up. I'm just going to mark it as an answer. Okay, differences between Argo CD. You should, <laughs> this is a great discussion here. Clearly, you came to the Flux Forum. What answer did you expect? Yeah, yeah, Why? <laughs> you're asking a very biased, yeah. <laughs> It was a well-timed question though, because that article had just come out, so. Mm. Oh. I have seen this myself uh, with, I think it was, oh, it was such a long time ago though. And we had to like make changes to this one repo. Yeah, it was strange, but I, I didn't, I don't, we just kind of were like, meh. <laughs> well, um, I can probably reproduce this if it's still, If it's a thing, yeah. If it's still a thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Let's see if there's a, a good emoji. <laughs> that one. Source controller continuously recreating Helm chart packages. Hmm. They're always repackaged at the given interval, even if the packages have not oh. changed. Interesting. That is actually really surprising. Oh, so they're saying if, if the source is a Git repository versus a Helm repository, then then it happens for the Git repository source. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it says. Interesting. There's a lot of problems like this that I wouldn't experience because my thirty-five customizations are not enough to strain a cluster of a few computers. I always wonder when people come in with this, like how how stressed is their infrastructure? Yeah. In my experience, it was mostly from pulling with Helm repositories. I didn't do much with Git repository actually, so I I've never seen this either. Oh, okay. I see. So one of the problems is that the source itself contains 
a bunch of YAMLs for many different charts. This is not just a Git repository for a single chart. This is a Git repository that refers to many charts. So each time it's pulling it, it's actually pulling all pulling the whole artifact. Yikes. That's a big repository. So is it is it repackaged even if the packages have not changed, or is it repackaged? No, I think that's what they're saying. Every, it's always repackaged, commit. even if it's not changed at the sync interval. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, is it also repackaged if there's no new commit? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Given well, I think if it's a Git repository, we don't have any way to know if something changed. So we have to repackage every time. If it's a Git repository, or if it's a Helm repository, we know the version. I think Git, we don't know the version of the chart. That's a good point. And there are like, you can set up CIs to have a mandatory version increment in your chart whenever you make a change, but maybe some people don't have that, their CI. Also having 200, I mean, that's, that's I, okay, no, that's in their clusters. I thought, I read that wrong. I thought they were saying they have 200 charts in this Git repository and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> That's not what's happening. It's okay. <laughs> 200 charts in this Git repository. Yeah, that's what that I would be insane. That's what I thought they were saying. I no, mean... I think that's what they're saying. No, no. I think they're saying they have 200 Helm releases in the clusters. Like maybe even using like the same chart over and over again, right? Oh, wait. I think you might be right. Oh my gosh. 200 oh, Helm releases and 200 charts. Yeah, it sounds like 200 microservices. <laughs> Why? Why? What if you wanted to make it? No. Mm -mm. No. No. That sounds like a nightmare. It's probably actually really common, I think. You think I'm, so? I'm talking to another person who has at least that many, I think. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Why? No. No. Mm -mm. How about like group? And then, well, it depends. I'm, I'm still living in a GitLab world, but still, <laughs> what? If, if your idea of how to implement the repository pattern is that you should have one repository for everything, then you have misunderstood the repository pattern. I think that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the bottom line. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, But then you can't like get out of that pattern very easily either. Oh. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, we're almost out of time. Let's see. I have a question. Now. Maybe you can answer. Yeah. Uh, when I have not tried multi tenancy, but maybe you have heard from other people using it. So currently, when you use customize, apply things. So if there are like, you have, let's say, five tenants, and let's say customization, because the customized controller has like four workers running, let's say. So if all of them are applying something, the fifth tenant will have to wait, right? Yeah. And Isn't if, that a if problem for is hang, Oh, yeah, that is a problem for multi tenancy. So if Microsoft has, let's say, hundreds of customers using Flux, they will have this issue, right? They have to increase the number of workers to a very high number. Right? Yeah, I don't see. Um... Because customization works in a blocking way, right? It'll I don't, apply I don't and know wait if you can even energy. just solve the problem that way. It does, it does block, yeah. I was watching uh, this morning, I had four Helm releases that were all stuck for some reason. And I watched the others sit waiting for their turn and nothing happened because there were four already blocked. That's a good point. I've seen that too. So. Uh, I've been working with it in the, the as part of rewrite and restructuring things. We're trying to address this situation, but to do, should we have a short requeuing reconciliation or should we have a blocking one? Right now we have blocking one, 
that maybe we can provide a, a short reconciliations instead of blocking everything. I just wanted to know, like, is this really a problem? Sounds like a problem, right? Well, Kingdon brought up why it would be a problem, right? If it if one is erroring. Yeah, it would be really easy to DOS the whole cluster if you don't have very high concurrency set and, and some kind of monitoring to make sure that you're not reaching the full queue length. Mm -hmm. And I think this will be true for the Terraform controller as well. That's also blocking. And we have tried the turn on. Could be. If not, I haven't seen it. I was reading the code and even that is in a blocking manner. So we've been trying to figure out, is this a good thing to do? Should we tell everybody to write short reconciliations and or continue with this pattern? Maybe just collecting some feedbacks. It's definitely a problem. It needs to be solved somehow. Oh, well, we're at the end of time. I'll stop the recording. <laughs>